Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my spring series. Here's a craft I've seen for a while and I've always wanted to make one. We're going to do it with a poster board from the Dollar Tree. Now I know there's videos out there that show you how to cut the perfect cone and I suggest you search for them on YouTube because, you know, I've always done it this way because I just like to get things done fast. <laughs> but I know there's another way to do this. I just roll it till it looks like a cone and then I glue it down. I put it on my surface right there to see if it's uneven or if it's standing up straight. And if it is uneven or I need to make any adjustments, I'll cut it again at the bottom until I get it right. So now I'm just putting my final strip of hot glue on the edge there to seal that edge down nice and tight so that we have a nice cone shape to work with. Now I was worried with this DIY that it would be too too light because as you can see we are using foam eggs and they don't have a lot of weight to them. I was wrong. You, de <laughs> you definitely do not have to worry about it being light. By the time you put all the hot glue on to hold everything on, this becomes a very weighty little tree. So don't worry about that. Now I bought the garland from Dollar Tree because at the time in the Dollar Tree that I was in, that was the biggest bang for your buck in getting the most foam eggs. I wanted foam eggs because I happen to absolutely love the texture of these when they're painted. I think they kind of look like cement or concrete. They, they have a rough look to them and I think it's really pretty and has, I guess, the illusion of making things look heavier. They definitely don't look plastic. I didn't want to paint plastic eggs because I was worried they might look like plastic. <laughs> so I stuck with the foam ones. And all I'm gonna do now is start at the bottom of this cone shape and start gluing these eggs around the bottom, working my way to the top. Now I'm showing this part on purpose. See while the glue is drying how I'm kind of pushing the cone down. That also helps it take a nice round shape because I did kind of squish it a little bit flat when I was cutting it. So that brought it back around again because I did that every single time I pressed the eggs down. I just kind of pushed it in the opposite direction if that was the area where the crease was and it worked brilliantly. So that's one way to kind of counter that. Now here's what I did with the eggs. I like the color green. I don't want to change it, but of course I don't like the glitter and I want it to look more like, you know, cement. So I just did a dry brush of white paint on each of the green eggs to make it a nice pastel matte egg. The next step I did was I painted the pink eggs pink in a nice pastel color and I used a nice pastel color blue, both apple barrel paints to paint the eggs. Any pastel blue would work, any pastel pink would work. If you wanna know exactly what color I use, just drop me a comment down below and I will find out. And here I'm showing you what happens when you mess up. Ignore the twine that got stuck on the <laughs> baby wipe. I don't, I don't know how that happened, but that is how you handle it. If you put too much white paint on, don't panic. Just take a baby wipe and start wiping it off and you will get that nice, soft, misty, hazy white look. Nothing will go wrong, so don't panic. It works just fine and just keep going. So I went ahead and I ended up dry brushing all of these with white because when it dried, the blue and the pink actually dried a little darker and against the green, it just didn't have that pretty look. And I realized it didn't have that pretty look because I had dry brushed the green. The next step was to take the moss from the Dollar Tree and glue it in between everywhere. And this is where I was talking about weight. I used hot glue and I got a tremendous amount of weight. And for the top there, you just squeeze it. You squeeze you know, your um, moss around to make sure it takes the cone shape. And I have to be honest, that did take a lot of time putting it in between the eggs, but the results were incredibly beautiful, so it was worth it. Now I'm taking some of that tissue paper from, well, this is Hallmark, it's from Amazon. I got a really good deal on it. And I'm just putting it in a little pink bucket I found at the Dollar Tree. By the way, this is one of those buckets that say the flower phrase on, you know, the, the silver ones that are at the Dollar Tree. And I found them in this Dollar Tree that was amazing. It had so many things I've never seen before and they had them in pink. So I'm just putting some Spanish moss on top. I'm gonna just glue this down because this is indoors. If you think you're gonna put this outside, get a Dollar Tree plunger and glue it in the center and then glue your plunger down inside your bucket and add 
rocks for weight to make sure it doesn't blow away but mine's just going to be inside so it's not going to go anywhere next i'm adding a raffia bow on the top because it was missing a little something all i did was tie a bow twice there to get four loops all together this is one of my favorites let me know what you guys think super excited to share this next DIY with you because it came out way better than what I actually thought and anyone can make this. So I grabbed the Dollar Tree little bunny head, those wooden ones, I traced it on cardboard, cut the cardboard out and then put it down to trace on a Dollar Tree mop head and now I'm cutting it out. Last time I was at the Dollar Tree, I grabbed this easel, little wooden easel type thing, and one of those chalkboard signs. And I'm gonna go ahead and stain them. Now I'm using watered down folk art, antique wax. You can use any wax you want. I also really like this water-based stain. It's a acrylic stain. I have it listed down below in my description box, but it's unscented and super slippery, so anything will work. I've been favoring the wax lately because when you water it down, a little bit goes a long way. And I, again, I'm always a bargain shopper, so I think the wax would actually last 10 times as long as the water-based stain, to be honest. So I've been using that for most applications lately because I can't imagine I would, you know, I craft, as you know, all the time, and I use the wax all the time. And I still have three quarters of my wax left. It's amazing. If you water it down, it goes and goes and goes. So great deal. Get it on Amazon. Folk art. I put the link down below in my description box. You can find it there if you're wondering exactly which one I'm using. And all I did was glue that little bunny head down. And then I took some Dollar Tree ribbon and I made two bows. One's a little bit bigger than the other one. And I glued the smaller one in the center. I had leftover carrots from the little carrot DIY I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the carrots down underneath this little head. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bow down in the middle of him right there or her. <laughs> I guess you could, it could be either. And just on the right hand side of the ribbon, I glued that down. I was thinking about doing it on the left side, but I didn't. And I decided to cut the purple bow down just a little bit shorter to show off the tips of the carrots more. Next, I took the Dollar Tree pom-poms and I cut them down. And that's just how I roll. If I don't have something, I will make it work. I will find something in the house, something to make my craft work. That's what I've always done. So Dollar Tree pom-poms, that's all I could find with the bigger ones. And I just cut them down. Now you can't cut them in half. If you do that, they'll unravel. <laughs> I did discover that, but I cut two small ones and then one that's a little bit tinier than the other two small ones so I can paint it pink and that's going to be his nose. And I'm just using some Dollar Tree tweezers here that I kind of pushed up in the center of this pom-pom so that I could be sure to get the paint all the way around it and hold it nice and firm. These are also Dollar Tree little eyes from the crafter's square aisle and little whiskers. Now this is twine that came from the eggs that I bought that are meant to hang as ornaments with holes in them. When you buy those little wooden things that are in a package, they'll often come with bent twine in there that's super, super thin. Save that, it makes great whiskers and it also makes great ties to tie a middle of a bow so that it's not as noticeable as well. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gluing the pom-poms down where I want them to be. I'm going to trim his whiskers a little unevenly on purpose to make them look more realistic. <laughs> I, I don't know, there's something about that guy. He has the same energy as my sweet little cat, Thomas. So I can't help but giggle. I absolutely love this DIY. I'm using a chalk marker, but first I write it 
all of my words. I always do this in pencil because I'm not that good at writing freehand. I'm not confident. So I like to do it in pencil first. And I just wrote hop, hop, hop. And it's so cute for Easter. Check that out. I love this one. Okay, so this is the free printable for the next DIY, but in this video, I'm also going to show you how to do this free printable because so many people have asked. This is a program called OpenOffice. It's a free download online. It's the program that I use for this process. And it doesn't show, now I'm screen recording right now, and what you can't see is the desktop behind this. It's just black to the right, but I've actually minimized this window so that I can see my desktop and see my printable that I've downloaded onto my desktop. And now I've dragged that into the program and then made it big again. So now it's covering my entire computer screen. And you can see there how it has those corners, all those little green little dots. That allows you to drag it and make it any size you want. You can make it long and skinny, you can make it short and fat, but look how easy that is. So most of what I do is by eye. I don't measure anything. I just have a feel for how big the computer paper is and about how big it's gonna look when it prints up. And sometimes I make mistakes and I have to go back and do it again, but this is how I do it. So this program has a feature called print preview. It's right there. You couldn't see me drop down the menu again. The screen recording has limitations, but I'm looking at it and here I can see that it's going to be a little bit too big for my project. So I actually go back and make these words just a little bit smaller because I can tell the, you know, I'm cutting it close, but that's how you do that. And I hope you found that helpful. And more good news, later in the same DIY, I'm going to show you the entire tissue paper printing process as well. I got these Dollar Tree eggs. They come in packages of two. I bought two of them all together, so I have four eggs. I'm going to go ahead and paint all of them white. I'm using white acrylic paint. This is Apple Barrel paint. I think Apple Barrel has picked up their game since I used to use Apple Barrel paint years ago because I used to have to do more than one coat. And I noticed lately I'm having really good luck with one coat. So I don't know if they've changed their formula. Has anybody else noticed this out there? I just I wondered if it was just me, but I'm having, that's one coat right there. So that's pretty impressive. But I went ahead and painted all four. I end up using only three, but I figure I'm going to use it for another DIY anyway. The next step, you grab some water and some tissue that you would blow your nose with. And it comes in two ply. If it's three ply, you peel it apart to get to one ply and you lay that down. I showed this last year. It's a fantastic quick hack to get fake wood and you just start squirting it with water and it will start creasing up and wrinkling. You can manipulate it a little bit. You can see me doing it here by patting it down. You don't want to move the Kleenex too much because you might actually make it flat and pull out the creases that you're making. So you definitely want to do this. It's a fragile process. If you make a mistake, you just take the Kleenex off, dry it off and start again. Now I'm using spray on purple adhesive. Any adhesive would work. I just like the purple one because it allows me to see where I've sprayed and where I missed. And it also lets me see when it's dry because it turns clear when it's dry. So now I'm just using some of the raffia that I got from Amazon to make little raffia bows. I had planned on doing this, whether there was a hole at the top of the egg or not, but just so happens there's a hole, which I also want to cover. So it works out well. And I'm taking the utility knife from the Dollar Tree to carve out those lines again and make sure that you can see the shiplap. So I don't have a scoring tool right now, you guys. So I improvise. <laughs> It's a utility knife for now. So that was drying while I was doing all of that. And now it's dry. And I'm going to go ahead and take the utility knife to cut off most of the dried tissue. It's really easy to do because it's really stiff by now. And then I'm taking a coarse nail file, the kind you would use with artificial acrylic nails. And I'm just going to go ahead and 
Well, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just sanding the edges to remove the rest of the tissue paper. And then I'm gonna take some more of that white acrylic apple barrel paint and paint the front of this. Next, using the color Nutmeg Brown and Apple Barrel Paint, we're going to lightly dry brush this to bring out the little designs that make it look like wood. Now, if you want to make it look like a birch wood, you can add some gray in there. I love pewter gray, but any gray would work. I have a great video on a DIY birch wood. You can see that on my channel, in my channel video lineup if you want, but it is a really fun on trend look and I know I this is kind of like a long bird house I guess but that's kind of the feeling that I wanted to give it I wanted to make it look almost like a wooden bird house so I can add these eggs now this is an Easter craft I'm going to include it with my Easter decor if you want to go ahead and paint these eggs pastel colors you could you could easily change this up to be more you know whatever your style is but I actually thought it would be nice to leave this up all year round so now I'm showing you some card stock, the approximate thickness of the card stock that I use. And this is tissue paper that you would use to put in a gift bag or, you know, inside gifts. Just regular old tissue paper. Mine does happen to be Hallmark, but I've used the Dollar Tree tissue paper too, and it works just fine. And this is a long awaited for I guess and highly requested video to show you how I actually put this through my printer. I'm going to show you from the beginning to the end so hopefully it will alleviate some of the mystery behind <laughs> how I print on my tissue paper. I'm not pulling it super tight as you can see I'm just making sure to the best of my ability that there aren't any wrinkles in there. I am using masking tape. You can use painter's tape if you want just something that would be easy to remove when you're all done. So in this case, there's overlap. I'm just flipping it over and taping it around the edges. You can also cut it off if you want, that would work too. But this is what we end up with. And here, I know <laughs> I put it on the ground here because my cat was so curious about it and I was worried he was gonna hop on the table while I was printing. So I just went ahead and threw it on the ground. I know that my printer prints on the face up. So I have to put mine facing towards me, but voila, there you go. It comes out beautifully and now we're ready to do the rest. So I'm gonna cut it off cause I was kind of just too lazy to take the masking tape off. I had waited a little bit too long after it printed up to let the ink dry and it's a little harder to remove masking tape. I actually would prefer to use the blue painter's tape or better yet that green one, I think it's called frog something. This is tape that would easily come off and you can reuse your cardstock that way if you want to. You don't have to throw it away. But I did what I could. So now I'm gonna tear the edges of the tissue paper. This is to make it look less noticeable. You can use water, but because this design was really close together and kind of, I cut it really, you know, I didn't have that much leeway in between the words. I was worried if I used water, sometimes with water it can, um, kind of go too far on the tissue paper and then you'll end up tearing deeper into the words when you didn't mean to. So I just felt I had more control by pinching the paper really hard and nibbling away at it with my nails and I got the same effect. So it all worked out. And I'm showing you here how I go about gluing it down. I'm using the extra strong glue stick from Elmer's, um, I usually use a Dollar Tree glue stick so it really doesn't matter what glue stick you use, any glue stick will work beautifully and I hold my image down in place on one side once I have it perfectly positioned before I start gluing it down so I do half at a time and another trick here that I just figured out with this DIY is if you take a little bit of the original paint that you painted and you paint the edges of the tissue paper that really makes it vanish I mean you can barely notice it at all even in real life so that's another fantastic hack for you and last but not least I'm using that utility knife to gently this is dry. I actually waited about half an hour for the glue to dry. Gently cut away the tissue paper that's in between those cracks there, right? Because we want it to look like it's printed on these eggs. But I love this DIY. It's made with the idea that I can leave it in my kitchen all year round because it's not 
obviously Easter, but at the same time, it can easily be incorporated into Easter decor. I was on Pinterest. I noticed a lot of the crafts there have, you know, they're using white eggs and brown eggs into the Easter decor. And I think that's a really pretty natural look, especially if you like neutral decor for your holidays. And now we're just adding a little bit of the Spanish moss on the bottom and that's it. We're all done. For this next project, I found this plain little bucket from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the sticker on the bottom and just add some white paint. Now, I want this to you know, look my usual style, which is kind of rustic, nothing's perfect. If you like the perfect look, uh, it's easy to do. You just would use some spray paint instead or do chalk paint and do two coats until you get it completely covered. I like things a little chippy, a little streaky, and a little, you know, I guess distressed. So I painted the inside a little bit too. That is a free printable that I created. It will be down below in my description box. You guys know the drill. <laughs> so just go ahead and click the links down there and it will take you right to it. That site was having some trouble last time I uploaded there. Their server keeps dropping. So uh, really frustrating for me as a creator. I'm gonna try and look into making another site of my own and upload all of my images from that site and see if I can't transfer it. So here I just tore the edges again. You can use water if you want to. For little projects like this, I usually don't. I have a way of tearing where I kind of press my nail into it and tear so it shreds on the edges and looks so similar to when I use water that I don't always bother using water. And then I took one of the Dollar Tree pens, just to stress the edges. I showed it in slow motion how it just soaks in. And now I'm just using the glue stick that is the strong one. Now I picked this up by accident. I didn't realize when I grabbed it at Walmart, I think it was about $5, but it's, you know, the Dollar Tree glue sticks work fine. And I've said this before, but Definitely this one's lasting longer. It doesn't dissolve as fast. So when I use it, you know, I press down, it's not eating away at the glue stick. So there is some value there for your dollar, just so you guys know. And again, I'm using the Dollar Tree furniture pen. These come in a set of three, and this is the color Walnut. And I'm just going around the edges here and there just to kind of give it some character and dimension. I'm going to take some tissue paper, just put it in the bottom so we don't have to fill the whole bucket up with Spanish moss. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the Spanish moss in. Now the thing is when you do this, you have to make sure that you make very clear and define, you know, puncture holes. See, I'm doing it right here. I'm kind of pulling it apart to make a definite hole for your carrots to go in so they stand up straight because you know, otherwise they won't go through the tissue paper. So you just wanna make sure you do that. And of course, I just wanted carrots in this. I think this is a classic Easter DIY. They are so cute to me. I can never get enough of these little carrot patch buckets and we're all done. <music> If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give me a big thumbs up it really does help my channel get seen here on YouTube and as always until the next video breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy mm -hmm.